Uh, today we're going to be demystifying the cycle of fifths. It's really, really simple to understand. So we're going to be using the base neck as a map to guide us around this cycle of fifths. Right, so before we start anything, we need to know how to construct a major scale, which again is really easy. So all we need to do is remember tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Right, if you remember that sequence, they can start the major scale from anywhere on the neck and it's going to work. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Okay, so if we move around the, the cycle clockwise, we get C. G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, C sharp, yeah? If we move around the cycle anti-clockwise, it's C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, and so on. So if you're paying attention there, you'll notice that when we're moving around clockwise, we move around a fifth to the next step. If we're moving around anti-clockwise, we move around a fourth. So in relevance to key signatures, if we're playing out with C major, we have no flats or sharps in it. Yeah, so we've got tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. To get to the next, uh, the next key within the, the cycle, we count down five notes. And that brings us to a G. We get. So the G major scale, and if you look at the notes involved there, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So we've moved round a fifth and we've added, added a sharp. Now if we move round a fifth from G, we get to D, D major. Right, if we construct the scale using the, uh, the sequence, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. So we've got an F sharp, and we've got a C sharp. Yeah, and let's look at the relationship between that F sharp and the C sharp. So if I play an F sharp here, and play a C sharp here, you'll see that a fifth, one fifth apart. So you can actually work out what uh, sharp, uh, what note's going to be sharp next by counting up a fifth. Uh, the way that I do it, uh, that makes it easier, actually starting the natural note, so starting an F, then a fifth up to that is a C sharp, or a C, so that'd be a C sharp, then another fifth round would be a G, so that'd be the next sharp, then another fifth would be D, then the next fifth is an A, then the next, another fifth is an E, and so on. So if you can visualise your sharps on the neck using fifths, then you always know what's coming next. Uh, a, a wee handy tip when, if you get handed a piece of sheet music and you're like, oh, what key's this in? The easiest way to tell what key you're playing out of is to look at the last sharp. So for instance, if we're playing out of G major, we've got an F sharp in there. To find out the, the key you're playing out of, or the parent scale, 
all we do is move that F sharp up a semitone to a G. And that tells you what scale you're playing out of. So if we're playing out of D, the last sharp in D major is a C sharp. Move that up a semitone, boom, you're playing out of D. So let's, let's look at the, the flat keys and see how they work. So if we start in C major, no sharps or flats. If we count up a fourth, one, two, three, four, we've got F, okay? So F's got one flat in it. So let's use the construction and we'll start here. So we've got tone, tone, semitone, right, let's look at these notes, so you've got F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. So we've got a B flat in there. If we want to work out what scale we're playing from when we look at flat keys, we want to find out the key signature, it's even easier. All you have to do is look at the second last flat in the key signature, and that tells you which key you're playing out of. Okay, so if you look at, for example, um, B flat major. So in B flat major, we've got a B flat and an E flat. So if you look at the second last flat in B flat major, it's a B flat. If you look at, if we're playing out of E flat major, we've got a B flat, an E flat, and an A flat. So if you look at the second last flat in E flat major, that's an E flat. So that tells you what key you're playing out of, and that works all the way around. So hopefully that's demystified the key signatures slightly for you. I always find it easy to apply this theory to the bass neck and try to visualize it on the bass neck in terms of the intervals that you have to move around. Uh, that personally for me works a bit easier uh, so hopefully that works for you as well uh, any questions just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you uh, remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get all my latest content um, the next lesson we're going to be looking at is going to be exercises over the cycle of fifths and the cycle of fourths just so you get used to how they sound how it sounds moving between each note within there it's really handy when you're working out exercises and you want to be able to play them in all 12 keys. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next lesson. Cheers guys.